Potomac River Generating Station is now a dinosaur. It's a vestige of an old industrial era along that waterfront. When you drive up the waterfront and you hit that plant, you just say, what is this doing here? The plant emits dangerous pollutants that cause serious cardiovascular and pulmonary problems in people who are exposed to these pollutants. Sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, particulate matter, both of the large size and the 2.5 uh, micron size, um, serious problem, mercury, hydrochloric acid. It's um, outdated technology. It's not up to date with uh, what we do now for pollution control. What I'd like to see Genon do with the Potomac coal plant is to set a retirement schedule to take it offline. The Genon coal plant is a serious polluter in its own right, but it's also an, an extraordinary symbol of everything that's wrong with the way we get electricity in this country. Right now, that the Genon plant is the, is the physically closest coal-fired power plant to where Congress makes its decisions, but if we have anything to do with it, it won't be for much longer. We work to support congregations that are asking a very simple question, which is, how is the electricity that's lighting our sanctuaries made? The coal is mined in Appalachia through this very destructive process of mountaintop removal mining that destroys mountains forever by literally blowing them apart to get at small seams of coal. Then the coal is burned where um, in addition to a lot of climate pollution, there's also air pollution and uh, neurotoxin, mercury, that's getting into both the air and the water and making people sick right in our own neighborhoods. My name is Robert Hull. I live at Marina Towers in Unit 1010 in Alexandria, Virginia. Not a bad place except for the fact that I found out that that was destroying my lungs. <laughs> <coughs> prior, prior to coming here, I had plain bill of health, no bronchial problems. I started in 2002 doing my consulting work. I was con going back and forth to Washington State, and I realized my lungs were clear when I was out there. I came home, sat on my balcony, and I could feel the burning, the eyes burning, the throat burning, and the rasping in my lungs, and it continued. When I went to see my doctor, I discussed with him what, what I've been experiencing with the plant, and he said, yes, that would do it, because I ride my bicycle right down the same bike path. And I said, well, you're going right through it as well. And to take a clean breath of air shouldn't have a price tag on it. It shouldn't be endangering you. I think that's a basic right of every human being. I deeply believe in the value of talking about climate change in communities of faith, in our, in our congregations. There's no better place to ask people to think about their own responsibility, the moral side of what it means to continue to get our power from coal. Once people understand how their choices are impacting other people and future generations and other people around the world, um, they, they do want to act. Right in the immediate vicinity of the coal plant, there have been a number of congregations that have gotten engaged on this campaign. I think our congregations in Alexandria envision a day when they could light their sanctuaries with solar power, bike to church or to synagogue. Um, I often ask in congregations, imagine if you took this information about coal-fired power and this information you're learning about climate change. Imagine if you took that to heart and let it transform your community. What would that look like? And so often, they can see it.